So Moad's building may be closed due to the mandatory shelter in place. Um, and Moad will, just so everyone, we keep getting the question, Moad will remain closed until September, um, or actually October, my bad. Um, we're doing a little bit of renovation and taking advantage of this time. And so you will walk into a refreshed building and we're so excited to welcome you for it. Um, so while we're closed, we wanted to allow everyone to get their fill of art and artists of the African diaspora. So twice a month, you can join myself or my colleague, Elena Gross, as we talk to some of our favorite artists in their studio. This is an, a rare opportunity to hear from artists directly um, in their studios to see what they've been working on and what they have coming up. Uh, as usual, we follow all of these conversations with an audience Q&A. I see someone already went in there. Um, so if you're on Zoom, you'll see there's the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen. Um, or if you're on cellular, you'll have to scroll for it. Um, and so if you put your questions in there, we will definitely get to them. We always reserve the last 15 minutes of the conversation for audience Q&A. We also do encourage you to speak to us and to each other through the chat function. Um, if you want to see any of our past programs, we encourage you to look on Facebook, Museum of the African Diaspora on Facebook, as well as the YouTube channel where you can watch all of the past episodes. This series was made possible by a generous donation by the Westridge Foundation, all of our MOAD members, and you who contribute every single week. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to read a few statements before I get into the bio of my amazing guest today. So the first one is that MOAD stands in solidarity with Black Lives Matter. We honor and mourn the senseless murders of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Dante Wright, and most recently, Micaiah Bryant. I think actually the most recent name has changed. Um, we mourn all those who have lost their hands, their, their lives at the hands of police brutality and racial injustice, including those whose names we do not know. We want to acknowledge that MOAD's commitment to racial justice is ongoing, and as such, we will continue to say their names to hold space and honor these victims. And as I said at the beginning, we also want to acknowledge the land that we are on. So as many of us are settlers, immigrants, or descendants of those who are forcefully brought to this continent, our institutions were founded upon exclusions and erasures of the indigenous peoples whose lands we are located. It's with deep respect that MOAD acknowledges that even in the virtual space, our people, our work, and our network servers are on native lands, and we thank the indigenous peoples of the Bay Area who have stewarded this land throughout the generations. As a reminder, uh, we encourage you to discover more about the original inhabitants of your land by visiting www.native-land.ca my amazing guest today that I'm so excited <laughs> for, for a multitude of reasons is Dana King, a classical figurative sculpture who creates public monuments of black bodies in bronze. King prefers sculptures because they inhabit space and space is power. She believes sculpture provides an opportunity to shape culturally significant memories that determine how African descendants are publicly held and remembered. Research is fundamental to her. When digging for threads to weave together stories of the past, there are historically generalized and racist ide ideologies that demand a wholesale upheaval of the normative misrepresentation of Black people's emotional and physical sacrifices. African descendants deserve public monuments of truth that radiate their powerful and undying resilience created from a Black aesthetic point of view. King sculptures link generations by revealing common threads shared values, experiences, and aspirations. She knows they help those alive today compare and contrast their world with that of social pioneers, both enslaved and free, whose courage and commitment to excellence helped create modern society. Dana King creates memories, hoping you see yourself and those you love in her work. Welcome, Dana. I am so excited to speak to you today. Uh oh, we have you on mute. <laughs> I'm on mute, I'm so, I'm, but I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. I, I love your program and, and it's peak inside of an artist's studio and their thought process. And, you know, it's beautiful. It's beautiful to, to see, you know, what people are doing. And thank you for bringing it to us. 
Yes, yes. How has how has this last year been for you? <laughs> you know, I know it's been extremely hard for so many people. Um, people have lost loved ones, um, lost jobs, they've lost connection. Um, I live here in a compound. Um, mm -hmm. There are 10 of us in here, including family. So my daughter and son-in-law and my grandson, who's four, who's my studio assistant, who has been dropping off some artwork as we've been, as we've been chatting. Oh, I love it. <laughs> and, um, and, and then neighbors. And um, so we've had a little community here and and that's been really rewarding and great and safe. And, and as far as the art, I, I have to say, I must be on some black female sculptor list because <laughs> grateful, but busy. I've been busy and, um, and, and in doing the, the type of work that, that I do. And, um, and it's been so rewarding. Here he comes right now. I love it. That's, that's something else. That's one that comes up. Okay, that just comes up. You know. All right. We, 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 we get the work of two artists today. <laughs> Phenomenal. <laughs> He's had a, uh, he has an easel in here. He's had since before he was born. So <laughs> he knows that this is his space too. But, um, but I just, I'm, I'm feeling really grateful and full and um, I'm super excited about what's coming and and i'm excited for the friends that i know who are artists who are working and and it seems that their their creativity is is just it's bountiful and so you know it's it's been a difficult time and challenging for many people um and it's also been a time of of a great reset mm. I totally agree. Yes, I think I think on on so many different levels, and I'm glad I'm glad it's working that way for you. Thank you. Thank you. No, I'm I'm Jack. I'm super excited. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, I've I've in 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 this time in this pandemic, I, I've I've been fortunate to install a a sculpture in New Haven, Connecticut, of an ancestor who was who was magnificent. He helped build the infrastructure of the town of New Haven and, and not a lot of people knew about him. Mm. Uh, he was a free black man named William Lanson and he built community. He had the first integrated neighborhood in the 1800s, early 1800s. And wow. um, he built a hotel. He hired enslaved and free black men to help build out the the long wharf in the city to make it the longest in the country at the time so that the city could compete economically with the port of New York. He built the canal system. I mean, he's a badass, right? And, and he, he spent his money in community. He was wealthy and he, um, he built up space for African descendants. Um, um, actually Derek has a ray gun, okay. and I have a ray gun too. All right, so let me just, one thing, Joseph, what? grandma's a little busy right now. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Joseph has a, has a ray gun. Um, yeah. You know, you know what I, I say? We, we have so many artists that, that have their pets, you know, <laughs> pop on. So it's it's awesome to to have another budding artist join us well, every time, you know. Here. Now he's walking out the door, but yeah, the dog's here. Yeah, uh, so welcome, welcome to the studio. Um, <laughs> always going on here and, and I'm super grateful, but but Mr. Lanson, beautiful man that he was and strong and committed. He, he spoke out at that state's legislature for voting rights for um, free African descendants and um, he tried to bring in a university for African descendants. And he was just, he, he used his access to, and his power and his money in, in the right ways to lift up people. So um, it was actually commissioned by a man who was 98 years old. Wow. In COVID. And I said, and you know, the foundry had shut down. You know, this was in the, I got the commission in March. 
<laughs> right at the beginning. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, everything shut down, including the foundry. And I'm like, I will drive this sculpture to New Haven, Connecticut in my truck myself, because this man has to see it. He's 98. And, and it happened. I mean, we had a COVID installation, everybody six feet apart, but um, super excited because, because of that, that intergenerational drive to lift up the stories of African descendants. So that was, that was like the first thing I did in COVID was William Lanson. And oh my goodness. How, 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 I mean, how did that work with the foundry? Because it's, it's such, you know, it's not a one person job. Um, so how, how, how did that work? Well, I was on the phone a lot. Like, are you going to open soon? Are you <laughs> when do you think you're going to open? I mean, cause I can only do so much. I can create it in clay. And then it has to go to the foundry, mm -hmm. right? The, well, the mold maker came to my yeah, studio. Yeah, because you do this, okay. you do this, and do this, and do this. And that, and that. Yeah, and this. Okay, so go do that, and I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> yeah. um, so, uh, it was the mold maker actually, you know, cleared out the space, the studio, and she had the studio for two weeks and, you know, everybody's in masks and, um, you know, the whole thing. And um, so, she, so the, the mold was made and then, um, you know, miraculously, really, the foundry opened like the day before the mold was finished. And <laughs> it was just, so it's kind of gone like that. It, you know, my life kind of goes like that. I'm grateful. I, you know, you have to, I trust the, I trust the universe. I trust spirit. I trust that this was something gifted to me to do. I'm going to do my part and everything else is going to fall into alignment because it has to, right? Otherwise I wouldn't have been gifted the opportunity. That's that kind of is incredible. Yeah. Wow, that was such perfect auspicious timing that everything, you know, just kind of fell into place at the right time. So yeah, definitely that's coming from a higher place for yeah. sure. Yes, it is, Dimitri. All of it is. And um, you know, I told before we all started talking um, and and opened up the the webinar, I I told Dimitri that I'm working on this project and that um, it's it has to it'll be installed on the 15th of June but we're still working on it and and materials are still coming to me and that I might have to get the door because tubing might yep. well it's here <laughs> exactly <laughs> and, and my neighbor Tiffany Ortega came over to tell me because you know the whole block oh, at this cool. moment yes 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 they're like we have to support this <laughs> yeah so she's bringing it in bless her heart you know Woo -hoo -hoo. yeah so I've got Ten boxes so far. Yeah. I mean, this is this is this is it's great to see the artist process. You know, um, it's a little bit of demystifying, but a little bit of a peek into like the wildness of it um, that I'm sure is is just heightened during this this time of still us being socially distanced. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it's been it's been a it's been a block party. Um, so my neighbor Tiffany helps me and. Um, my my neighbor Juan Carlos Quintana and his wife Shriba they um, they have loaned me five hundred square feet of his artist space. Wow! Because when we finish them here at, at the compound, they gotta have a place to park until I take them to Golden Gate Park. Mm. And um, and so he's got sixty five ancestors in his studio right now. And they're leaving tomorrow to go to the park. I guess we should maybe talk about what this project is and like. <laughs> we we will we will definitely get to to that project. I want to kind of I want to go back into some of of your story. Um, you know, and and this is a question I've been wanting to ask you for for a while um, since I discovered you were an artist. I, I guess it's been a while. Um, but I you know I I'm an Oakland native. I grew up here, and so you have a face and a name that I know very well from KPIX, um, you know, and in fact, 
you know, just in my house, it was a it was a big deal to to see a black news anchor that we we had them, you know, Belva, Dennis, Faith, um, yeah, I, I, Rogers. Ex yeah, ex exactly, exactly. Um, so, you, you know, a handful, you can name all of them and Pam still, I think Pam is the only one who's still on. <laughs> She's still she's still hanging on, but you know, can can you talk about you know? Do you mind talking about this 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 move for you? This you know leap of faith from you know what I would assume is a very secure <laughs> position um, as a KPIX news anchor to being an artist. You know this this scary journey that a lot of us you know who are our artists but not full time are just like I want to make that leap, but then you know you did it. So, you know, what what led you to make that move? And then also, were you an artist this whole time? <laughs> yes. Okay, thank you so much, Tiffany. There is a, they're all here now. Thank um, you, neighbors. Um, yeah, no, I've always been an artist, Dimitri. I, um, uh, I didn't know I was a sculptor, but that's mm. another story. But, um, so I, when I got into broadcasting, I never wanted to work past the age of 50. I did not want to grow old on TV so that some man, and I say man, because I never had a, a female boss, never had a female mm. boss. I didn't want some man to say to me, you know, Dana, you need to, you need to pull this oh, up. Oh, wow. You need, to, you, need to, you know, slim down and whatever. Because no, that's just, no. Um, and so I always put that out in the universe, like 50 and out, 50 and out. <laughs> out of 50. And uh, I started back in school in, when I was 48 to get my master's in fine art painting. So really, wow. Yeah. Um, so about, about fifth, about, I don't even remember, 15, 18 years into, the, into my journalism career, um, I went to Kosovo and, uh, and I am embarrassed to say, but it took me a couple days to, to recognize that I didn't see any women. Mm. Men were in the cafes, they were playing, having board games, drinking tea, they were in the market. There were no women. And then when I found the women, cause I asked, I'm like, where are the women? <laughs> and I was led to, to the farms where women worked in the fields like donkeys. I mean, they wow. literally, they pulled the plow, they wore the plow. I saw old women walking up um, mountain hill sides, you know, roads and with, with straw on their back attached to their skirts. And, uh, and I, I was mad, <laughs> I was mad and uh, I came home and I went to the art store and I bought canvas and paint and brushes. And I just started painting a, an entire series of Muslim women. Wow. Because I didn't want to write about it. I didn't really want to talk about it. I just needed to, I needed to get that out of me in some way. And, um, and those were the paintings that I used um, to go back to art school. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't in my head at all at that time, but several years later, um, I decided, yeah, I, I really want to do that. Um, I, and so I did, I went back to art school because I wanted to learn how to paint and wow. I wanted to learn how to paint in with glazes and layers and start with grisaille. And, you know, I just wanted to learn how to paint like the old masters paint, um, figurative. And um, it was always a challenge for me. <laughs> and about halfway through, I, a friend wanted to take this course with a master sculptor and she didn't want to go alone because it was in Sacramento. And I was like, yeah, I'll go. Weekend, whatever, it's fun. I couldn't even finish the course. By the, by the Sunday morning, I drove all the way back to Sacramento to tell the <laughs> master sculptor, listen, I can't stay. I'm full. I have no more room to learn anything. I just need to go do this. And wow, go, please, crazy woman. <laughs> I 
and um and and i've been sculpting ever since I've been sculpting. no way okay so 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 just just to recap so you you out of the experience in kosovo you need to to express yourself you felt like you needed to paint and to draw to kind of artistic yeah and and that and that was the spark that led you to be like huh this is this is his path. was that something that you were doing all along kind of on your own or well you know i i stopped painting i stopped doing anything uh creative in that way for 20 years right i raised a family built a career um but there was something artistic that satisfied me about putting words and pictures mm -hmm. um and and sound into tape and to tell stories, right? Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. Um, and it and it really did satisfy me for the longest time. And the business started to change, and I, you know, I started to be the one who said, you know, when I was a reporter, why are we always or we never? <laughs> and I thought, oh my god, I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> I'm that. I'm that crafty old reporter, right? Cantankerous in the corner, mumbling to herself like. <laughs> so uh so it was a wonderful release for me to paint and i never i didn't show anybody my work i you know it was just i had a room in my house where i painted and i just put everything up on the wall and um you know because i i didn't grow up knowing that you could be an artist yeah yeah for a living. Mm -hmm. i have no idea never went to a museum as a kid um, you know, I'm the product of a, my mom was widowed when I was one and a half. My brother was three. She worked and, um, and it just, it, you know, we just didn't have that kind of time um, and access. You sure. And I didn't know any artists, right? I had no idea you could do this. And, um, and that's, that, that's a point I really want to make for parents and um, young people that, explore, mm -hmm, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. ask questions, you know, find ways to, 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 to meet people that are of interest to you. Cause you just never know what your gift is until it arrives. Right. Exactly. And, um, and I also will say that that gift that you have, it will arrive. It may not arrive in your twenties, may not arrive in your forties. It may take you to 60, right. Mm -hmm. Or beyond. Mm -hmm. But it's coming and it's going to show itself. And, and, and when it does, you know, let it. So, so, you know, that's the other thing, you know, when I was in journalism, you know, I, I pushed to succeed, right. You know, always pushing for, you know, the next thing. I don't do that anymore. I, you know, and now I just, I, I let it come. I let it come. And, that you know, is phenomenal. It's way better. It's way better because usually the stuff that I push for when I got it, I was like, oh, <laughs> right? Like, oh, this is really not for me. Yeah, I can't tell you how many of those I had, you know. And, and of course, you know, you had to hit me in the head a couple times, you know, to figure it out. But I, I, I feel like, yeah, I, I try not to push anymore. That is that that's amazing advice for everyone, because I think that that kind of applies for anything in life. <laughs> Stop, stop, stop fighting and it will let's just let it come to you. I want to, I want to show some of these images of yours. Um, and, and I have other questions and we can kind of talk about them as we go along, but I think it will be nice to, to show some of these images. So just give me a second to set this up. Okay. Hopefully you can see that now. And where did you go? Oh. Uh, this thing is so weird for me. Better okay, you. what is going? What is going on? <laughs> uh -oh. My computer decided to uh, to be a little wild on me today. What just happened? Okay, just one second. <laughs> Let me go back. I tried. I tried something different. Uh, this is and why obviously, 
obviously it didn't work for me today, but uh, <laughs> this is why this is why you're a sculptor. Yeah. I hear you on that. Okay, let me try it one more time and see if it will. It's a little early to be seeing double, you know. Exactly right. <laughs> okay, you're you're. Are you seeing my screen right now? I can't believe I have to ask that. Okay, you're seeing it. Yes. Okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah. And other people are seeing it too. Excellent. All right. I love that everybody can see what I want you to see. All right. So I, I wanted to start off with an image uh, of your work in clay because I just think that's important um, to see, you know, the process from the very beginning um, of its development before it gets cast. Um, and so this is the queen piece. Mm -hmm. She's not and cast I, yet, and I really need to cast her. I love. Wow, her. really? I remember. I remember seeing you posting this this piece on uh, on Instagram, and I was just like, "Wow, this is incredible!" Um, and 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 is she not cast because of the foundry? Or are you still looking for funding for her? There's always that funding issue, you know. <laughs> it's expensive, and so. Um, I have her, uh, she's sealed off with um, encaustic wax. And uh, so she's fine. She's not going anywhere. And we really, you know, she's fine. I'm looking at her, she's over in the corner. And, um, <laughs> but I, I love her. And I love, I love clay. I lo so you sold 860, which is a, a sandy clay. It has texture to it. Um, I mean, there are some really fine clays. Red clay is really amazing to work with, but it's so smooth. And mm -hmm. this gives you like the, you know, the texture of skin. And, um, and I really, I like working with that, but <sighs> she is just, she is so strong, but you know, even the strongest among us shed tears. Mm -hmm. mm. And whether we do them in front of anyone or we or alone, usually alone. I mean, we we have to have to let we have to let that come out. And that's what she is. She's 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 in, in like a she's like prayerful, meditative, but you know, the tears just come. They they just fall from her eyes. Wow. Yeah, she's absolutely a stunning piece. And I hope someone watching is like, I, you know, I want to make that happen. <laughs> so I hope someone out there <laughs> is that person who's like, we've got to make sure that this gets cast and realized. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for, for me, just the, the complexity of the textures that you're using in here, the way that you're rendering the hair. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still just like, wait, hold on. You didn't finish that class. You just were like, let me go home and let me do this on my own. That's wild. A while. I've got some really, um, you know, I've, I still have the first pieces that I did. They were of my daughter. And, you know, she, first of all, she, as a teenager, didn't want to sit for her mother. And, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, they're, they're, they, they're still here because um, they're important, you know? We all start somewhere. Yeah, yeah. All of us, the, you know, the most refined, fine artist starts some at the, at the beginning. And so I wanna, I, have all, I, I keep them as a reminder that, um, that I have a lot to learn. I, I, you know, each piece I see, I, you know, I, I, I look at with an eye of like, what can I learn here? Some of them I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> No, it's part of the artistic journey though you know who who doesn't have that you know if, if if someone says that they don't have every one of their pieces is perfect you know they're they're hiding something yeah <laughs> you know and and the first bronze i ever did of byron rumford the honorable Byron. yes yes and i have that one because and i look yes. at mr rumford and i'm like no mr rumford i see you and i love him <laughs> I, there, that was a that was a steep learning curve, steep. And and the thing about um, about that moment as a public artist, like I love my work. I I do even even in its flawed um, um, existence. 
but I was I was about to unveil him, and I was talking blah, you know, like I'm talking now, blah blah blah. <laughs> and, um, and 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 it hit me as I looked out on the sea of people, many of them who who were proteges of Mr. Rumford, who wow. knew Mr. Rumford, or grew up net with his family. I mean, so it's like family, and his family was there. I stopped and I was like, oh, oh my God. I, this has just hit me that I love Mr. Rumford. <laughs> and I don't know that you will. I hope you do, but I, you know, I'm standing here naked. So let's just go, you know, let's just rip the, the fabric off the top of him and, and I'll let you decide, you know? But it was that moment of clarity, like, wow, he's not in your studio anymore. Mm -hmm, he's out, mm -hmm. he's out in the middle, you know, Sacramento and Ashby. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. I, I mean, so I live very close to this sculpture and I would drive past it every single day. And it took me weeks to not realize that there wasn't an actual human being in the median because <laughs> when you're driving down that road, he's just right there. And I'm like, oh my gosh, he's gonna jump out of, you know, jump into the road, be, be, be careful. I love this sculpture. And I just have to say that I didn't know who Byron Rumford was. You know, it took me a few times to, to go by and then I'm like, huh, who is this person? It's not, you know, this isn't the middle of a public park. This isn't, you know, where we're used to seeing public monuments. It's it's in the middle of an intersect, you know, a median on a very, very busy road. And I think I was passing it every day, you yeah. know, at the height of the commute hour. But you stop and you're just like, huh, let me find out more about this person. And so I started to learn more about him. And then I was just like, oh my gosh, Dana King? Like, is this the same Dana King, you know, that I've seen? on television, like, I didn't know she was an artist. For me, this was kind of the, the whole realization for me that you were an artist, that there was, you know, this important person in Berkeley that we all should know about, this first African-American elected official. Um, and there's an association with the housing nearby, right? Um, mm -hmm. What's the rest of the, the rest of the story? Well, he, he, was an, he was a man way ahead of his time. So he wrote the Fair Housing Act, which allowed brown and black and Asian folks to live wherever they wanted and to buy houses, right? Instead of going through a white intermediary and praying that they were gonna do the right thing and give you the keys and the paperwork, <laughs> right? Um, so he wrote the Fair Housing Act for California and then it got rolled into the Civil Rights Act of 64. He also wrote uh, legislation, environmental legislation. So he was elected in 48. He was writing environmental legislation back then. He was writing legislation on behalf of women in the workplace back then. And wow. um, so he just was way ahead of his time. And he was a pharmacist. He was the second African-American to attend Cal Berkeley in 1933 and gain his pharmacy license. And then of course, no one would hire him. And then, um, you know, finally got a job at John George and um, John George, yeah, um, uh, medical center or hospital. And um, I think that's the name of it anyway. Um, but he, and he would have salons, political salons in his pharmacy, which is wow. kitty corner from the sculpture. And so he raised up a whole generation of politicians um, of, of African descent. Um, Carol uh, Kennerly being one of them who went on to be the, the vice mayor of Berkeley, the first African-American woman ever elected there. So he's the, he's the one and only sculpture of an African-American in Berkeley, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the only one. And um, they finally get, put some lights around him. <laughs> So that he doesn't, that. So he doesn't stop traffic anymore. But <laughs> um, you know, I like to I I like my pieces to be um, approachable. I don't I don't I've only got one that is built on a pedestal, and mm. I want people to walk right up to them and to commune with them and to and to you know and to and to feel that energy, and, and as opposed to being on this big pedestal because he wasn't that kind of guy. Yeah, you know, yeah. He he was a man for the people, and that's the name of the sculpture. But um, he really was, and that's why you see all these 
these honors for him around, you know, Highway 24 is, is the is the Byron Rumford Highway. And um, he was, you know, I, I just wish there were more like him mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. in, in office. I just wish there were more like him. He was, he was a quiet, powerful, and I don't mean that in a negative way. He used his power for the people. And, mm -hmm. And he was, and he built consensus, and he and he worked really hard. Um, so it was a huge honor to to do him. But the but but the side benefit was that he he is he offers traffic calming. He slows down the traffic. Yes, he does. Yes, he does for sure. <laughs> yeah. And you know, just you know, just this displacement was displacement your decision. Um, you know, to to have him in the middle of, of this median, or or how did that come about? No. So um, Carol Kennerly and uh, the artist, the fabulous artist Mildred Howard and yes, a man named Mildred. Zach Franklin got together and, and formed a committee because they wanted him in exactly where he was standing, is standing, because the, the community is changing. It's gentrifying. Mm -hmm. Yes. They want the new residents to know that South Berkeley was black. All the shops were were black owned the doctor the lawyer the the pharmacy the you know the dry cleaner the grocery store every everything was black owned back then and that these homes in that community were black owned mm -hmm. and um well taken care of and so this median strip um used to be where the railroad tracks ran Mm. And um, and Mr. Rumford had those taken out because because that made this neighborhood the other side of the tracks, literally, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And and so they wanted him on on that on that land. That and, is incredible! Oh my goodness! Yeah. Very yeah. intentional placement. Very yeah. intentional. And his pharmacy is Kitty Corner, and it's now a um, um, a community mm -hmm. medical center. So, uh, so he, he, and then there's a, a mural of him across the street. And I mean, it's like, it's the Byron Rumford <laughs> town square in, um, and he grew up and lived right down the street. And um, so they wanted that, they wanted that educational component to be significant. Um, and, and what you said was beautiful, you know, you didn't know who he was, but you mm -hmm. looked at who he was. And that's the whole point of, for me, my work, because, you know, you could come upon a sculpture on accident or intentionally, but the, the, the learning is the same, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You're still going to, you're still going to learn something and hopefully it will encourage you then to investigate your own history as well as American history. Because yes. we are American history, and um, and we and we deserve to be uh, honored for the depth of of um, commitment we have given to this country. Um, the the you know on our backs. Um, for sure, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump into a few other because I I definitely want to leave a lot of space for for your current project um but you know i had to, i had to include this one <laughs> for obvious reasons i yeah i mean you you kind of started to talk about this at the beginning and in the introduction but i'm also just you know just interested in you know also thinking about your 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 ideas about um not having them up on on these pedestals is particularly not a traditional pedestal um and you know what is what is your relationship we're gonna get into monuments and monumental reckoning but you know just just your ideas about these monuments um you know are do you intend for your sculptures um or your monuments i should say to be in dialogue with any history or art history um and in particularly thinking about um you know, thinking about these monuments that we've been reckoning with over these last few years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely, they're, they're in dialogue with history. Um, this is William Lanson, and, and, and the sculpture is called King William Lanson because mm. they had this, this convention back in Connecticut where he's, or, yeah, Connecticut where he's standing that 
there the the political structure would elect a black man because you know you're not going to elect no black woman a black man to be the liaison between the white community and the black community and they called them they were the governor the black governor or the king community called him king so um he was the king in new haven connecticut from 1825 to 1830 which is wow. why he is he he's looking the way he is his top hat represents that stature out in public because this man um whenever he went out he was scrutinized right and he was in my mind together from head to toe right handmade obviously his clothes are handmade but the finest in leather boots the top hat the jacket i mean he was he was sharp little 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 <laughs> side part right here exactly um, right and you know kind of like jump uh, a little closer for folks <laughs> yeah. there he is and um and so the reason he is standing on the stones there there are three stones um varying size but they're all um six inches deep and they so he he when I say that he built, he helped build the infrastructure of New Haven, I mean that literally. He would carve rock out of quarries, get them onto a barge, take them down the river, put them in the water, and then set them, right? And the same with the, um, the canal, that was for the Long Wharf that he built. And then the, ca the canal was the same. Big stones cut like three feet by two feet, massive. So he was a very strong man. And, um, and, I, and I wanted there to be that connection to the canal, which is, which is the grass that runs behind him was mm -hmm. where the canal was in New Haven. So Yale, the dorms at Yale are to his left and the Yale Medical Center is to his right. And that land that he's on is owned by the, the city of New Haven. Um, that strip of land goes straight into the black community in New Haven. And, you know, um, and after he was um, dedicated, I actually had a Zoom call with the New Haven Police Department at the behest of the uh, chief of police because I wanted them to use Mr. Lanson to connect with the kids who were, there's a skate park down there, there's a playground down there. Um, I wanted them to say, hey, have you met Mr. Lanson? Have mm. you, know, do you know anything about him? Let's go down there. As opposed to, hey, get out of here. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, or worse. Um, so I wanted them to use Mr. Lanson as a, as a to connect with community. Um, but his hand is in a fist. You know, a lot of people think, you know, when they think of classical figurative sculpture, they think, well, you know, well, yeah, he represents the 1800s and that's a yeah yeah <laughs> yeah how does yeah yeah like how does that apply to today how can i connect with it especially as a youth exactly and so when he was being created um george floyd was murdered oh wow ahmed aubrey was gun run down and gunned down and breonna taylor was murdered in her sleep and they were protest you know, there were protests everywhere, including here in Oakland. And, and I couldn't go. I couldn't go out. I mean, I'm 61. I, I, I couldn't risk getting sick. Because mm -hmm, remember, mm -hmm. a 98 year old man is the reason for this sculpture. And I, I just, I, I owed it to him. And, um, and so my, my um, involvement with that time was to um, change the design of the sculpture. So he, he was always designed with his hand on his thigh. And, and it struck me that, well, the next movement, if you move your hand up from your thigh, is this, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? And so I wrote to that 90 year old man whose name is um, Alfred Martyr. And I said, Mr. Martyr, I really believe that if William Lanson were alive today, he would be out in protest. He would take it to the streets 
and use his power and his access and his connections to, to, to speak. And, um, and he would support these protests. He would support Black Lives Matter. Can I change this design from his hand to a fist? And that man wrote me back and he said, do it. Yes. He said, I mean, that was the first line, do it. He, he said, I want, when children come up to this sculpture, to ask why is his hand in a fist? Is there something wrong with it? Is mm. he's not angry, he doesn't look angry. So what's going on there? I want them to think about that. I want them to think about the Panthers. I want them to think about Black Lives Matter. I want them to think about Black power. I want them to think that Black is beautiful. I want them to dig. And he said, and he said, I absolutely want kids to ask, why is his hand like that? Oh and, my gosh, that is incredible. It, it truly, he's, he's such an inspiration. This is a, a, a white man who is, um, who is and has always since he was a youth been a communist. And he is, he started an organization um, on behalf of, of um, okay, brain, just, it just emptied it out completely uh, on behalf of, um, it'll come to me, the Amistad. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was not, I was not expecting that at all. <laughs> right? So the Amistad, uh, the, the survivors of the Amistad were tried in New Haven, Connecticut. Mm, okay. And freed and, and, and acquitted for, for murder at sea. And they were, they were stolen from, oh, where are they from? Um, in Africa. Um, that'll come to me too in a minute. Um, and, and, and they, um, they took over the ship, they commandeered the ship, they killed the, the sailors and they sailed it. They thought were, they were heading back to Africa, but they uh, were headed, headed the York. other way. And when they arrived in port in New York, they arrested them, put them in jail, but their trial was in New Haven. So he started the Amistad Committee. I know he's not that old, but, um, mm -hmm. but, um, but named it after, after the, um, the, the men and women on the Amistad. And um, he is single-handedly with his foundation, with his organization, lifted up Black people in Connecticut for the last, I don't know, 40 years. The, um, the trail, they have a, um, uh, an African-American history trail in Connecticut that he um, started and supported that highlights every home every business of every um, African descendant that has lived in, in Connecticut. And um, wow, yeah, he's phenomenal. <laughs> that is wild, that phenomenal, is wild. Right? Um, and, and so it wasn't hard for him to say yes to that, sh that shift. Mm -hmm. um, it was immediate and I'm so grateful. But, um, but this is about education. I mean, as when he was being installed, people walk, that's a, a bike and, and um, walking path and um, and they would stop and they go who is that and I would tell them and they were like what never heard of him exactly and that's I think that's just the power of your work and placing it in these 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 um, in such public spaces I'm gonna jump to a couple other ones because I'm I'm as usual running out of time I do I'm this sorry, every I'm single time no 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 no, no, no. It's, it's, it's all me. I'm like, I, I'm eating it all up. I want to hear all the stories. Um, but I definitely need to hear the stories. You know, we started off with, with these men. <laughs> and so I also want to hear about these amazing women. Um, They're my family. So, in Alabama. Yeah. So these women were commissioned to honor the women of the Montgomery bus boycott. Um, because, you know, Every day they went out in the world and walked to work, to the hair salon, to the grocery store, to church, 
Um, and along the way, you know, they would ask their neighbors, I'm going to the store today, do you need anything? I mean, mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. so this protest was, it. people were all in. You didn't see black folks on the bus, right? So they had to help one another to survive this. And, and through the cold winters in the South, they've never been in a winter in the South. You're like, wait, it's really cold here. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> you know, and then the summers, it's, you know, hell hot it, it's so hot but um so these women are standing in a triangular space which is a feminine space a feminine design and and it's a very difficult design to to damage because each side um pushes against the other and that strength and it is an, impossible to, to mm -hmm. break. and they represent the phases of a woman's life and um you have the young mother to be who is is going to birth this child and 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 um, feed it and and help it to to learn and then you have the woman in the back um, who is a, a teacher um, and and will work with that child once it leaves the home all the way through to matriculation and then you have the grandma who is, is here on this planet to teach that child what is theirs to do and, to, and who they are to be and how they're to move through the world, right? Um, so it's like a story within a story. And, and I got to pick who I wanted these women to literally be. And um, the teacher is my Aunt Tiny. I'm who was a go in on her? <laughs> who was who was an, a teacher in the in the segregated South and went on to become a principal, and Aunt Tiny was the most loving and creative woman. She sewed all of her own clothes, but don't you cross her and uh -huh. don't cross those children, right? Don't even look sideways at the children. That's my Aunt Tiny. Who, if you're from the South, you know she wasn't tiny. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> well, that's my dad's sister and um and then the grandma is my great grandma my great grandma wow. Luvinia James who was enslaved and um and then freed and and sharecropped with her husband Lazarus James we have one photograph of them and um and and it, it it was such an honor to to put her in the lead um mm. you know to put the elder in the lead because she was because people see her now thousands of people go through the national memorial for peace and justice and they see my great-grandmother who is your great grandmother and who is everyone's great grandmother and they see her like she was never seen in life mm -hmm. i love it and yeah this so that's that's yeah th this piece is phenomenal and thank you for sharing the stories of who they are that just adds a whole other layer um you know it's it's when when I when I when I see this piece, I can't help but think about uh, Lava Thomas's pieces of the protesters holding their, um, you know, holding their numbers in front of them exactly as yeah. they're being arrested. Um, and stoic, they're like, yeah, yeah, picture. Go yeah. Ahead. I I I I just think this the, the you know the whole story of the complications of their lives and then also decentering you know the one or the two hero figures um and and to just realize that you know it's this whole movement and then you're you've taken it to this whole other level of thinking about it intergenerationally and, and it feels like that's a theme throughout your work is thinking about intergenerational you know if you're bringing some ancestor from the past you're thinking about the, the little ones um you know is is that is that always something that's functioning as you're as you're envisioning a piece it, it always it, it's it's everything because we were all little ones mm -hmm. 
we were all children once, and hopefully we'll all be old. Um, and, um, and we have so much to give to one another in that cycle of life. And it, and it should be endless. And I love that I live in, in, an inner, in a multi-generational home. Um, it, it, I wish that on for everyone. I, I do. I mean, we need one another. And mm -hmm. my grandson, he, he keeps me thinking in ways that I, I probably wouldn't if, if he weren't here, you know? Um, I, it, and it's just across the board, young people and, and to watch them learn and to absorb information and to, and to spit it back out and, and to see how he does his art. And it's just, yeah, we need one another. And, um, and, and the, you know, also in this, in this um, triangular um, space, they are all in support of each other. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if the, if the young mother-to-be stumbles, I and Tiny's gonna help her, right? And they're all holding up great grandma. They are all there for her. And, and they don't even know each other, right? In, in my mind, even though that is my Aunt Tiny. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? But, um, so, um, I don't know. It's just the world that I, I, I wish we would stop and think about always. Well, I think I, th I think some of the stuff that you're doing, I'm gonna I'm gonna play this really quickly, and then we're gonna get into into this piece because ho hopefully this does serve you know serve that purpose as well. All Yeah. 
So that, you know, gives us a lot of the, you know, the, the story behind this project. Um, but I mean, I mean, we can see one right behind you now, actually. <laughs> a prototype. And um, I can, yeah, I mean, I got that janky computer thing, like if it goes off, if I plug it, that's it. So, um, so the only thing that's changed is I've ch increased the size of the tubing. Because, um, so it's made of steel. Um, it's a, 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 the platform is, I'll bring one up. Hold on, don't go anywhere. We're not going anywhere. No one's going anywhere. <laughs> so it's a very simple process. I mean, I had to break it down to its basic, right? So that is the base. Do you see that? Yes, yes. And then the head goes into a split cuff right here. It gets tightened down and then we braid the hair in. Do I have any braided ones? Yeah, I do actually. Um, okay, I'm gonna disconnect this. Don't remind me to, remind me to reconnect it. <laughs> So, well, here, here, I'll show you these blades. So initially, oh, that's not gonna work. Initially, I was gonna have, I was gonna triple braid them. Wow. Because it's beautiful. <laughs> it is gorgeous, and that's some work. <laughs> it is some work, and let me tell you, I got artists in here, and and it, it's some work that'll ruin your hands. So we are back down to um, a single braid because mm. it's um it's vinyl and. Uh, it, you know, you, you know, when my mom, okay, I'm playing back in. My mom is, my mom could braid so fast. When I was little, I had long hair and she would give me two braids every day. And she would braid that fast. And, <laughs> and this, you, you, like, you can't be using your thumbs on this. Otherwise, I will have people in 10 years be like, uh, hi, Dana, I don't know if you remember me, but um, I can't use my right hand anymore. <laughs> Um, so I, I, I'm on them all the time. You, you can't bend anything. You've got to braid like this. You've got to use all of your fingers to braid because otherwise it's just, you, I mean, I massage my hands every night with oil and, um, because it's hard work. Mm -hmm. it's hard. We let it sit in the sun out in, um, we, we cut everything and then, um, we let it sit in the sun so that it softens because it's, it's wow. you know, brutal. But um, but but I initially it was I was gonna um, it was I wanted to put like a, a mask face on her, mm. and um, in conversation with um, people, they were like, "Well, well, what tribe does that represent?" And um, and and then I thought, well, and and how can you? you know, if you're not of that tribe, how do you represent them? You know, but, um, and then I thought, well, so many of us don't know who our people are mm. on the continent, where we're from. And um, I thought, I, I want everyone to be able to look upon these and, and, and vision their own story, right? Um, and, and, and see their people. Um, and so the beauty of just everything being flat, this, um, I got something on there, but, um, of, is that when the sun hits it, Yes, yes. when the moon hits it, you can see your reflection in it and they're, they're built at a 38 degree angle. 
so that they're going to carry that light mm -hmm, mm -hmm. during the day and during the night. And, um, and so that, that became the important um, connection for me so that we could all participate, right? As opposed to um, one group of people here. Mm -hmm. Kind there. of seeing themselves. How, how did this how did this project come about? I mean, we know that um, you know there was some form of iconoclasm with the, the Francis Scott Key uh, piece and was literally pulled down, um, you know, out after being um, you know defaced. And you know, for me and I'm sure several people, we didn't know the history of that. And so so that act allowed us to dig a little bit deeper and oh my gosh, I still haven't even gone and read. Um, through the third verse yet, um, mm -hmm. but none of that surprises me, obviously. Um, you know, how did this decision come about? Can you kind of walk us through, um, can you kind of like walk us through, you know, this, 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 this whole thing and the lift every voice, like, you know, coming in at the, exactly at the right time, like how did all this to come together? And I know see Black Women had a piece in this, go get my sketch back. Um, I got an email from a man named Ben Davis on January 31st. I didn't of know this year? Of this year. I didn't know who he was. And so I looked him up and I'm like, hmm. So he um, left his advertising world company to start Illuminate. And, mm. and their desire is to create installations that give people joy and create awe and wonder and um and and lift people up and installations that are free never any charge to see them um and uh so they did the bay bridge lights mm -hmm. and uh they did the uh the, well they lit the pink triangle last pink triangle. So that's an Illuminate um, production as well. And they, they put light in, the, in Grace Cathedral and, um, and his vision was to, um, to take the Spreckles bandstand. Um, he's, he, Illuminate has um, brought it back to life. It, it now, now musicians can just plug in as opposed to dragging all their equipment. Mm -hmm. So it's all, um, it's just been redone. And he looked at that building and he, and he thought it needs something on the freeze right at the top. And, um, and in light of the type of song that is our national anthem, which is vitriolic and, and, and all about war. Um, and the fact that James Weldon Johnson is 150 this year, along with the age of the Spreckles bandstand, he wanted to see lift every voice on top of it, and um, and in, and also because of the like the the um, just the geometry of the the music concourse. So you look straight down from the from the Sparkles Bandstand to the plinth that mm -hmm. held Francis Scott Key. I'm going to get there. I swear, I'm going to get there with the story. Um, <laughs> um, and and. Um, and, and he thought, well, I, I, I would like to see something on, that would be great to have something on that, in that space too. So he, so he wrote me a letter and I saw who he was, I, I contacted him and, I, and he said, yeah, I'm happy to, to talk to you. Um, Cause he, um, he asked me if, if we could talk about a potential project. And uh, so he told me all, he, all these things that I just said, and he said, and wouldn't it be great to see James Weldon Johnson uh, on that plinth and I said listen thank you so much for contacting me um appreciate it don't know how you know who I am but whatever <laughs> um, I said but no not hmm. only can't I do that I won't do that I said that um that plinth resonates with the same racist hateful energy because it carried 
Francis Scott Key for over 130 years in wow. several locations in the park. I said, and he said, he was like, okay, well, what would you do there? And I said, I would rent a wrecking ball. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a wrecking ball party, right? Um, and then he said, okay, but if he couldn't do that, what would you do? <laughs> and, um, you know, we went through a couple of iterations of, of ideas, but the, but the original ideas were to cover the plinth. Mm, okay. Hold that energy and not allow it to be released out anymore, right? And so, like, the, you know, one of the first designs um, was, was, was a, the divine feminine um, that, that would cover this whole plinth and um, 52 feet tall. Wow. It's a lot, a lot to cover. And, and this was, this was um, hair was going to be like hair hair wow wow um, this is gonna be hair hair not real hair but you know mm -hmm. um braidable hair and um african fabric and um and um it was a you know it was a, it was a these are conch shells and um originally you know i thought of, of the of the um quilts that um enslaved women would would use as communication, right? Um, and and I was um, at that time I was working with um, friends from C Black Women, and we and so we 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 ran this up the flagpole, um, and you know San Francisco is having a reckoning. Yes, for that. sure. <laughs> Yeah. Very public reckoning. Well, yeah, the art community. So um, when we took it to the San Francisco Art Commission, they wanted to, us to know that they really loved the concept, but that um, right, right now the city is is evaluating all of its public art mm. and that they are actually um, putting together a committee called the Monuments and Memorials Committee to evaluate um, the San Francisco Collection of Public Art, and they didn't want to do anything with any monument until the report was finished, which probably will be sometime next year. Well, nobody wants to hear next year, right? Mm -hmm, exactly. Um, and so, um, and they said in the meantime, you know, we don't want to put anything on them. We don't want to touch them. We don't want to do anything. And so, you know, I was disappointed. I understood. So it came back and, and they said, you know, that, 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 that sentence that you can't, you can't touch the, any of them, you know, resonated. And so um, the next idea was to take the, and I've got really, really bad uh, drawings of that next phase. But um, so then we went to, so then, um, that's another project. So then you talked about like, like a big, 20 foot head and, and then wrapping it around the plant. Okay, that's really. Um, <laughs> and, and then the, the next idea was just to miniaturize the, the monumental reckoning. And instead of the energy of one, mm. you would, you would um, expand the scope of that energy to, to hundreds. And um, and that's how it went down. I, I, I love to be able to see how, you know, the concept changed and how it evolved, you know, and your, and your thinking behind it and, um, you know, then connecting to another history. So, you know, you've got these layers and layers of history that are now being told, um, you know, to bring people back to this first slave ship, um, you know, holding these 350 souls um that you know become the first enslaved folks here in the united states so you know I, I i love that layer um of of all the history and we are towards the end okay. of our time somehow this is the first design by the way it's cute thank you for showing us that i i like that one and you know i think maybe that one could 
exist somewhere and I, I would love to see it somewhere. But I want to I want to plug this an important part of this project and the fact that um, even though it's it's happening and you're working vigorously towards making that happen for this Juneteenth, um, there's still a GoFundMe out there. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The 350 ancestors and the maintenance of them over the next two years, because the installation will be there for two years, is um, is is costly and. Um, I want you to know that we're going to recycle all this tubing too, because it, um, the, it comes in hundred feet and we don't cut it. So it can be renewed. Wow. So I need everyone to know that. Um, but because I got 35,000 feet of it. <laughs> I need that to recycle incredible. It. I ain't got no use for it, but um, it's monumentalreckoning.org and we have a GoFundMe. Um, We've been blessed by the inclusion of Moad, um, who is supporting this project. Um, so many um, organizations, the Acton Foundation, um, the, um, the Niantic Foundation. Uh, there've been so many people that have, that have called us and said, what can we do? Um, the Irvine Foundation, um, it's, it's been monumental. The response to this has been significantly monumental, but I want to say that this reckoning is is something that we have to do publicly and we mm -hmm. have to do privately. We all have a reckoning in us. That's our work to do, um, because we 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 have so many spaces of injustice, so many areas of oppression, food, food justice, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. mass incarceration, corporate America, um, healthcare, voting rights. Art equity is one aspect of it. It does us no good if, if when we get, when we move the needle with like a Derek Chauvin mm -hmm, verdict, mm -hmm. And we walk outside and have to walk past a, a Confederate monument. There, there's a hole in our circle. We have to close this circle together in all areas of oppression. That, that is what the ancestors mm -hmm. need, right? And, and we are all their wildest dreams. We are all capable. We are all capable of, of, of closing that circle. And, and eliminating systems of oppression. Hey, Amen. I, 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 I want to, you know, th this is your, uh, th this project is, is making its big debut on Juneteenth. Um, are there events? Are you going to be there? Yeah. So, um, you know, the, the weekend is Juneteenth, right? Starts Friday, goes through Sunday. So we didn't want to, um, in any way get in, in um, and disrupt by having this be mm -hmm. um, dedicated. Because there's so many events that have been going on for a long time here yeah, in, yeah. And in San Francisco. So our, our dedication will be June 18th in Golden Gate Park at, okay. at 5.30. And we'll have a procession of of women and children and families and um, and choirs uh, leading us to the ancestors. And then we will have a libation ceremony. We'll pray over these ancestors. We'll ask them to um, to please come in. And um, and if it's okay with them um, that we've done this and um, and 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 just have a, 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 a memorial basically a celebratory memorial um, that that brings in the 350 ancestors and 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 I hope it becomes a space where people come to commune with them to come and talk to people that don't look like them that mm -hmm. this is a safe space for the conversations that need to happen in this country that will bring us together as opposed to push us apart and um and, and I'm hopeful that there will be singing and poetry and dancing and laughter and joy that comes from this monumental reckoning. That is beautiful. And, and, and is all this information available for folks on the, on the website? 
It is. We have a, yeah, monumentalreckoning.org. We are, you know, the state is opening up June 15th. Mm -hmm. And so we're waiting on city instructions on how sure. we can safely do that. We want everyone to stay safe, but we also want everyone to come and, mm -hmm. meet, mm -hmm. and meet the ancestors and bring your ancestors and bring your people um, so that we can do this all together. But it will all be on there. It'll be on, uh, it's on my Instagram. Um, it's on Monumental Reckoning Instagram. So yeah, we have all that social media stuff that I- Beautiful. <laughs> but yeah. And, and Sade has uh, put all of the links in the chat. Thank you so much. Um, Dana, this has been an amazing conversation. One that I have been looking forward for a while. Um, especially when I saw you at the gala in that amazing black and white um, outfit <laughs> with your scepter. I was like, I have to talk to her. I have to talk to her. So. <laughs> Thank you. I love that dress. I, oh, oh my gosh. I there. Yeah, yeah. And if, and if you haven't seen it, just Google search Dana King and you will, you will see it. It's one of the images that pops up. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Dimitri. This has been... Um, this has been a joy for me to, to be here. I'm so grateful that you do this. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for being here. And thank you for everything that you do. You are amazing. And I can't wait to see the work um, installed in the park. I will be there. So yes, it, it, it'll come. And, and I hope you get rest in this next two weeks. <laughs> I will, but you know, what do they say? You know, I'll, I'll sleep when I die. <laughs> Not that I'm asking for that, but yeah. So, but thank you. This has been wonderful. I appreciate you. Thank you, Dana. And thank you, everyone. Um, we appreciate you being here. As a reminder, hey, Cheryl, as a reminder, um, this uh, recording, if you came in late, will be available on Facebook immediately following this conversation. And by uh, Friday, it will be on Moad's YouTube. Take care, everyone, and we'll see you next time. Have a great one.